All right, this lesson just uh, is continuing practice with translating real-world situations um, that involve equations or inequalities and also solving them and graphing them on a number line. This is the last lesson we'll have before we have um, a quiz in a couple of days. So I want to look at the do now because the do now today is very important. So go ahead and turn to that, please. So taking a look at the uh, answers to the do now, these were pretty basic uh, one-step equations, and you know how to undo these. And remember from last week where um, the way we solved an equality was pretty much the same way we solved an inequality. Still go through the same process. Um, but I did want to note how we are undoing multiplication with division, undoing division, and this is division by multiplication. And I wanted to again emphasize that x over 3 is the same as 1 third times x. These are the same, okay? Because there's one type of problem that I want to make sure you can do, and that we're going to work on that next. So go ahead and turn to the next page, please. So check out this problem. This looks a little bit different uh, mm. than what we've seen so far. Normally, we've only had a 1 in the numerator, and that made it a pretty easy problem to solve. Mm. But now we have a number mm. not equal mm. to 1 in both the numerator and the denominator. So we have to treat this in a, in a special way, and there are a couple of ways you can think about it. And um, after this, I'll let you decide which way you think is best. So the first way I want to talk about is think of this as two separate uh, options. And actually what I mean there is not options, I mean operations. That's mm. a mistake. So you should think of this as a multiply by a 2 and a divide by a 3. And we're going to undo both. And we just did this in the do now. Um, so it's connected to that. So in the do now, we had 2x is less than or equal to 6, and we had x over 3 is less than or equal to 6. So we're going to undo it the same way. So we're going to start by undoing the 3. The 3 is a division. So that means we're going to multiply. And that lets us know that the 3s cancel on that side. But what we're left with is not just x like we had to do now, but we're left with 2x. And, of course, this side is 6 times 3, which is 18. And now we have to undo the 2. And that makes our final answer x less than or equal to 9. All right, so you can think of this kind of problem where you have a number not equal to 1 in the numerator and the denominator as two different operations. And you're going to undo each one individually to get your answer. So we undid the 3 by multiplying, we undid the 2 by dividing, and we got our answer. So there's actually a couple of shortcuts. So let's take a look at one of them. Uh, Oops, we have, I'm going to write the problem again, 2 thirds x less than or equal to 6. You could do this in one step. Now take a look at this. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And you may or may not remember what the reciprocal is, but that's just the fraction flipped. And just like we've always done, we have to balance it out on the other side. And take a look what happens here. We have a 3 on top and the bottom, a 2 on the top and the bottom that we're multiplying. So that means everything cancels out. So the 3 and the 3 cancel, the 2 and the 2 cancel, and we are simply left with x. Okay, so what happens on the right-hand side, though? Well, we haven't done these in a while, but 
we could think of this as 6 over 1. And remember, we multiply fractions. We multiply across. So that's going to give us 18 over 2. And of course, that's the same as 9, which is what we got above. There's one more way to think about this. Um, I'm going to write the problem again. 2 thirds x less than or equal to 6. Mm -hmm. And you could think of this as 2 thirds times x. So you could say, well, I'm just going to divide by 2 thirds and divide this side by 2 thirds. And we have the same thing on the top and the bottom, so these would cancel out, leaving us with x. And what you have to remember is when we divide by a fraction, like we're doing here, dividing by a fraction was the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is the same as 6. Hang on. Same as 6 times 3 over 2. And of course, that gives us 9 again. So you have several options here. You could do it in two steps, which is not a bad idea. You can multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Or you can divide both sides by the fraction, which amounts to multiplying by the reciprocal as well. All right, so go ahead and turn to the next page, and I'm going to let you try one of these on your own. So first of all, with this problem, we have to do a translation. Um, so let's read. Joan can spend two-thirds of her savings on new clothes. We know that she spent 100 How much had she saved before buying the new clothes? So we have some key words here. First of all, two-thirds of her savings. The of represents multiplication, okay? Multiplication. I'm going to put a little time sign up there. Um, so we know that the total amount that she spent is 100. Um, so this is actually going to represent an equal 100. And we want to know how much her savings was in the beginning. So that's that's our unknown. We'll call that uh, D, because it's money. So the equation for this, and it is equation. We don't see any other words that are like less than or more than or at least. She spent exactly 100. So the equation would look like this. Two-thirds times d, I'm not going to multiply, I'm not going to put the symbol, we know that this means multiplication, equals 100. So now we have a situation, just like we had on the previous page, of a fraction uh, times a variable equal to 100. All right, so I'm going to have you pause the video. Solve that like we did on the last page, and then come back and see how you did. All right, check out what I did here. Um, I decided to use the reciprocal method, so I multiplied both sides by the reciprocal. So multiplied by 3 over 2 and 3 over 2. On that side, that gives me 100 times 3 is 300. I have 2 on the bottom, and 300 divided by 2 is $150. So, um, she had $150 of savings, she spent two-thirds of that, and that means she spent $100. All right, let's take a look at the next problem, um, and then I'll have you do some practice on your own. Here's another translation problem, so let's take a look. The Girl Scouts sell cookies for their annual fundraiser. Girl Scouts are encouraged to sell more than 25 boxes more than 25 boxes. That's important. Emil uh, has already sold mm -hmm. 16 boxes. And 
we have to write an inequality to represent this situation. So we know that she has started out with 16. We know that she has to sell some additional boxes, put C for cookies, and she has to sell more than 25 boxes. So 25 won't cut it, has to be more than 25. And there's our inequality. All right, so um, now I want to know how many more boxes she had to sell. Again, you can figure this out in your head, but I need you to solve this algebraically. So I'm going to write it again real quickly. 16 plus C is greater than 25. We will solve this by undoing the 16 by subtraction, which leaves us with C greater than 9. And notice how, again, we make sure you bring down the same symbol when you're solving an inequality. So, um, she has to sell more than 9 boxes in order to end up with more than 25. So say 9 boxes. Mm -hmm. Alright, go ahead and turn to the next page, please. All right, um, for these problems, I want you to think about them uh, a little bit differently. I want you to look at the inequality and try to reason what you think uh, potentially uh, good solutions are in this list and which solutions aren't in this list. So think about what values of x when added to 4 will be less than 17, and that's what you want to circle down here. Now you could solve this and get the answer, and that's fine as well. We're going to do probably a combination of that on the quiz coming up, but I just want you to think in terms of, okay, let me almost guess some possible values of x that would work here. So I'm going to start with 14. So if x is 14, 14 plus 4 is 18, and that won't work because that's not less than 17. So let's, I'm going to say that I guessed 14. I'm going to put a no. So what about 13? So let's see, let's write guesses. Okay, so 13. If I do 4 plus 13, I get 17. But that doesn't work either because 17 is not less than 17. It's the same as 17. So 13 is a no as well. But then you can probably see where this is headed. Um, what if I put 12 in? So 4 plus 12 is uh, 16. 16 is less than 17. That works. So I'll put a check mark. And then you can imagine that pretty much any number that I pick below 12 is going to make this work. So I can circle 11.5, um, 10, 8, 6, 4, 1 half, 0. What about 12 and a half? How does that work? Well, we can check it. 4 plus 12 and a half is 16 and a half, and that is less than 17. So we can circle this one as well. But then the actual solution is going to be the following, and you know how to do this. So we have to undo the 4 on both sides, and we're going to get x less than 13. And that's the official solution and of course you've circled all the numbers that um, make that inequality true. All right, I'd like you to go ahead and do 2, 3, and 4. Pause the video, check these out, and then come back and see how you did. All right, check out these answers. 
Um, this one it turns out every number that's 25 or lower will uh, make this true. So we had a lot to circle here. This one, uh, just because the variables on the other side doesn't change anything, we have to undo it. We need to isolate the variable no matter what side it's on. So I have to undo the 4, not the 11. That gives me x less than or equal to 15. I'm going to start, when I say that, I start with the x and say less than or equal to 15. And then here, the keyword was no more. That translates into less than or equal to. So we had 32 people. We know that we can add uh, more people, but it has to be less than or equal to 40. It needs to be no more than 40. So that was just a translation problem. All right, go ahead and turn to the next page, please. These problems are just some basic problems in solving and graphing. And I wanted to do these because you're going to find problems like this similar on the quiz. So let me just do the first one with you real quick. Um, so here we're going to undo the 9 and end up with m less than or equal to 4. And I'm going to pick one of these marks to be 4. And it's a closed circle because it's less than or equal to, right? And less than means below, and below means shade to the left. Something like this. Okay, I can make that nice and dark so it's obvious. All right, you're going to pause the video and do that for the rest of these, and then come back and check your answers. All right, check out these answers. Um, I think the only tricky one might have been this one, again, with the variable on the right-hand side. So we still add 6 to both sides. Um, so this reads as D greater than or equal to 7. So I mark it 7, close circle, and then greater than or equal to means more than. More than means above, and I shade to the right. All right. Um, let me know if you have any questions about any of these. Uh, if there's some time, you can do your homework, but we also have an exit card today uh, that will come at the end of class as well. All right, again, let me know if you have any questions.